So hi, I'm Paula. I am one of the owners of the Dog Breeder Store, and I'm thrilled to have Alan Cook on the screen with us today. He's the inventor of a self-cleaning potty system for breeders, which, yes, uh, I've been wanting this for five decades. And when I saw it on Shark Tank, I saw, saw you handing a roll uh, that was filled with poop to the sharks, and they said it didn't smell like they thought it would. And uh, it's an incredibly exciting invention for a breeder who may have a large litter of large puppies that are depositing pounds of poop uh, on a daily basis. And so I would like to know, Alan, how the Brilliant Pad was conceived and invented. So it's great to be here. And um, Brilliant Pad came on the heels of another invention that our team put together. Uh, you know how there's those self-cleaning litter boxes for cats? Our team didn't create the first automatic litter box for cats, but generally acknowledge of creating the first one that really worked and figure out a way to design something that didn't clog and jam, figured out a way of making it not smell, figured out a way of making pet poop significantly easier to handle and dispose of. And we're really proud that that litter box for cats was a tremendous success. Um, and sometime we said, hey, what's next? And it started off as, well, over a cocktail or two, last time cats, how about dogs? And let's do for puppy pads what we had done previously for kitty litter. So that was the genesis of the idea. Um, but no surprise, cats and dogs are very different. And in, you know, we said we're going to offer and market Brilliant Pad to people that are using puppy pets. If you've bought into the concept of using an indoor dog potty, this is an easier, cleaner version of doing, you know, doing it the manual way, not touching the dirty pad, not dealing with turning your living room into a giant dog uh, bathroom for the pups. Um, and we brought this product to market a little over five years ago. And despite all of our experience with the cat litter box and all the good engineering and stuff our team has done in the past, you know, this was the first product of its kind. And it took us a couple of years of iterating and refining the product to get it work in reality as we thought up in our head. And we had to do some things to um, make the product mechanically stronger and more robust. We had to make it so the urine wouldn't drip over the edges onto the floor. Uh, we had to reconfigure our supply chain to make this pad roll uh, more absorbent and make the disposal as easy as we show in our videos. Um, eventually people said, you know, your cat litter box cleans automatically when the cat leaves. So I would like my puppy pad to clean automatically after the dog leaves. And after we implemented that feature, people said, yeah, well, what I really meant was, and different people had different preferences. And that led to the creation of an app to give people flexibility and control. So Brilliant Pad cleans when you want it to. Um, we also added the camera, not sure if people would really want to look at the poop. Uh, but people told us, wow, this is like my favorite feature because I really know what is happening. I can see at a glance, is it clean or dirty? Or better, if there's a mess, well, is it my big black dog or my small white dog that, you know, how, not just what is the situation, but how did we get here? And that started conversations with other animal professionals, other breeders, saying this is a great tool to monitor the health of the puppy. And that led to conversation around breeders using Brilliant Pad in their own whelping pens, saying, if it's great for my clients, it should be great for me. And it is, but wow, uh, we learned that whelping pens are a whole nother situation compared to your home or mine. And you have a lot of puppies running around that are super duper cute. And wow, do they make a mess. Um, <laughs> so we, can, we had to make a bunch of more changes to the product to make it tougher and more robust to work successfully in a breeding environment. And that was about two years of trial and error and iteration to get the machine working in such a way uh, where curious puppies would pull and strike out on the paper and make it so that the puppies wouldn't uh, create their own confetti and rip the pad to smithereens. Uh, we found the amount of uh, poop on the pad was a lot more uh, than something I would use at home. Uh, and we found there was another set of requirements for durability and robustness. Uh, and through, we have over a hundred breeders that were giving us feedback over the last couple of years saying, I love the idea. It would be better if, and then we would you know, work away and try to deliver on those suggestions. And we would say, Hey, we got something for you. What do you think? 
and they would come back and they would try it again and say, this is fantastic. Well, I should say it's better. So I'm glad that we're making progress, but now I need, and people would start you now going through this. And this is like the iterative process we went through for about two years to take this new innovation for puppies to make it strong enough to work for breeders. Wow. So mm -hmm. I feel like I came in at just the right moment because um, you did do all that work with seasoned breeders, I assume, and mm -hmm. probably some newbies. And, you know, the Poopalooza that we deal with is uh, world renowned in the breeding community. And my husband, who uh, has to wear a mask while we're cleaning our nursery several times a day, uh, has always wanted to invent a flushing toilet <laughs> for the nursery. And you've done it, really. Um, and since you started with a pet version, um, and I can hear how you evolved to the breeder version, I've been messing with the system that you sent me, and I'm just incredibly uh, impressed with, first of all, how easy it was to put together. I mean, it, and how durable it is. It's not a piece of junk. And um, I have an extremely high-end nursery. I've got the Cadillac of nurseries, the Mercedes of nurseries. And... Um, this is a piece of equipment that fits into that. But what's nice about it from my perspective is that it's affordable for somebody just getting started. So they don't have to spend a thousand dollars on something that you know they might have to buy later on when they've sold a few litters. And so, you know, just firing up the app was really easy. Um, you know, I discovered that uh, the control unit pops into it and pops out really simply, and I could just hose the entire piece of equipment off if I want to, which is a huge deal. So I do have some questions um, that have come up in my conversations with other breeders. And so one of them has to do with the size of animals that you feel you could recommend that could safely use it in the nursery and also in the, I guess you would call it the pet version, you know, where somebody's taking a puppy home out of our nursery or, or uh, picking up a shelter puppy or whatever. And so what, what size is too small for a puppy that might get under the cover, which is a pretty small area, you know, the poop will go through it, but you know, it, the puppy had to be pretty small. And then um, what is too large? Okay. Well, in terms of what size dogs can use Brilliant Pad, um, it's pretty robust. Let's start on the big size first. If you and I were to say, hey, let's show off to our friends and stand on the machine together and jump up and down. Uh, besides our friends looking at us, that what's really strange, the machine would be strong enough to support that. So on the large size, um, it really it's not about necessarily the weight of the animal or number of animals. It's more about how much space do they need to do their business. So when we say, you no, know, for dogs when they're fully grown under 25 pounds, that's a crude approximation because we're really asking, you know, what's the turning radius of your dog? How much space do they need to do their potty dance? And, you know, generally small breeds under 25 pounds, easy peasy, medium breeds, 25 to 40 pounds. It depends if they turn in a compact way, they can make it work. If they're bigger than that, they probably need more space. Um, now, in terms of the breeders that are using Brilliant Pad, it's not just for the small breeds, because even a big dog is born small. When born, they fit in your hands. Now, they will grow, and at some point, they will outgrow Brilliant Pad. But we're finding even for the largest breeds, you know, can they use it for the first four weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks? Generally, yes. So it really comes down to how early can you introduce them to it? So they pick it up, ease the ease. Earlier the introduction, the easier. And generally, there's very little problem with most breeds through eight to 12 weeks, the time that you're typically whelping the puppies. Um, and if they start small, even if they get bigger, they're used to it. So it'd be very different to put a big animal on the machine from scratch versus an animal that's been using it since birth. So on the small side, we generally encourage people to introduce the puppies when the dogs are two or three weeks old. Some wait till they're four weeks or five weeks because they're like they're with mom for a couple of weeks. Their eyes are closed. There isn't that much going around. Our general point of view is the earlier the introduction the easier for the dog. Um, some people said, well, wait, you know, even though the machine's only about two inches off the ground, a little dog can't step up, which is why based on breeder feedback, we created the ramp to let people make their way up. Um, and generally we recommend at two to three weeks to kind of, 
you know, make it, make it available. Um, and all the time, generally the space for the poop to go into the roller is about two inches tall. So if you have a puppy that can fit in the palm of your hand, it is conceivable that a dog can go on a magic carpet ride and can kind of get, get rolled up. Um, usually that doesn't happen. <laughs> um, and there's a number of like safety st systems built into the product um, that if you were to stick your hat hand in, you would feel the paper wrap, you know, it would begin to gently squeeze your fingers. Once it starts squeezing a lot, there's a safety stop that turns itself off. Um, so in the unusual event where a dog got rolled up, it's hard to believe that would happen. But if it did, um, when the paper would, when it would squeeze slowly, so it gives them a chance to get out. And then if it's squeezing too much, it just stops. So generally we don't think there's much issue waiting for the dog to get to a certain size before they go on it we generally recommend introducing the puppies to brilliant pet as soon as you're comfortable and we generally suggest that starts at between two and three weeks okay that's a great answer and i i doubt that any breeder would put the system on an automatic schedule with little bitty babies um so what I love about the app and also the control unit that is on the on the device is that um, we can set it to a schedule, but we also can just uh, advance it when we're ready. We can advance it partially. We can advance it completely. And so I can't see that happening actually in a nursery. 